so today we will be discussing about the p53 gene which is also called as tp53 gene it also has several other names it is also called as the tumor protein p53 cellular tumor antigen p53 and tumor suppressor p53 or simply p53 so it is generally called as the guardian of the genome as this kinds of prevents the neoplastic transformation so this prevents the cell getting into uh, tumorogenesis that is prevents the normal cells to get into the malignancy and this is of specific importance as more than 70 percent of cancers has a defect in this particular gene p53 gene which is present in a normal cell so we'll straightly get into the point that the t53 so the t53 so the p53 gene has three mechanisms by which it can prevent the formation of cancer and i've written the all three mechanisms here the first mechanism is activation of temporary cell cycle arrest which is termed as quiescence and the second is the induction of permanent cell cycle arrest it is termed senescence or by triggering the apoptosis that is the programmed cell death so now we'll go into a picture to understand the function of p53 gene so this is a normal cell which is over here and imagine when a cell is under a stress so the cell is under a stress it might be some ionizing radiations and through certain carcinogens and certain muta mutations that could give certain amount of stress to a normal cell so a normal cell has a p53 in it so whenever the cell is under stress the p53 gets activated so this p53 gets activated and it has three mechanisms in which it can prevent the cell turn into malignancy so this is one of the first so we'll see here it is one of the first mechanisms which is here so we can see the activation of p21 gene or the activation of da dd45 genes so what it does is basically it is the first mechanism that we discuss here that is the activation of temporary cell cycle arrest so this is what happens in these two places regarding p21 gene and da dd45 genes so by activating p21 which is actually a cycling dependent kinase inhibitor so when a cycling dependent kinase is inhibitor the cell cycle is arrested in the g1 phase so ultimately the first mechanism will lead to cell cycle arrest that is a temporary cell cycle arrest so this is a good thing because during the cell temporary cell cycle arrest there are several mechanisms that would indulge to repair the dna so in case of successful repair so we can see here in case of successful repair so the repair is fine so the cells are again entering into the mitotic division and they can indulge in cell division so this is the first phase here where there is a temporary cell cycle arrest in the g1 phase which would give time to the cell to undergo dna repair mechanisms and if the repair mechanisms are successful then the cells can enter the cell division phase so these are all normal cells these are all normal cells which are at nc which where the dna repair mechanisms are fine and they can now enter the cell division phase and here we see the second option which the second mechanism of the tp53 gene so we'll go back to the text and see the second mechanism which is the induction of the permanent cell cycle arrest which is called as senescence so we can see here so in case the repair fails there is two mechanisms through which the p53 can handle the repair me repaired mechanisms one of the mechanisms is by inducing senescence that is maybe the, the cell is kind of old cell so so which it can detect because of the chromatin changes in the particular cell which would alter the gene expression so it is easier for the p53 gene to identify that this is an old cell and we have to permanently stop the cell division and this would enter a phase of senescence so this is the second mechanism so that the cell would not undergo any cell division further so this is the second mechanism through which the p53 can prevent the cell entering into malignancy so the third mechanism so we'll go back to the script here so here we see that 
third mechanism that is triggering of programmed cell death that is apoptosis so this here is the third mechanism which i am denoting here where there is induction of apoptosis and this is the ultimate method of the tp53 gene so this is done with the help of bax gene which is bax which i have written here bax which are all pro apoptotic genes which tells the cell to undergo apoptosis that is induction of cell death and this is also one of the mechanisms when the dna repair fails in the first mechanism of the p53 this also induces another pathway which would send the cells to undergo apoptosis a programmed cell death so that they do not divide further and undergo any kind of mutations which would lead them to malignancy so all these things here is the basic function of the p53 gene and the next picture here is what happens if there is a mutations or loss of p53 which we would discuss later so this is the normal function of the p53 genes which has three mechanisms as i said before and we'll see a different picture to to understand better so this is another picture so initially when there is dna damage or any cell cycle abnormality which causes hypoxia which is obviously which i said some kind of stress so this is some kind of stress to the cell which could bring about the dna damage in the cell so we can see that p53 gets activated here and you can just wonder what this mdm2 is so this mdm2 is a normal protein which is always attached to the inactivated p53 cells so whenever the cell kind of senses a uh, stress the p53 is released from mdm2 that is they get detached from the mdm2 and kind of gets activated as p53 and as we said before the p53 has several mechanisms so one of the mechanisms is the cell cycle arrest which gives time for the cell to undergo dna repair and if the dna repair is successful the cell cycle can restart so that it can undergo cell division the other processes are here so this is one and two where there is temporary and permanent cell cycle arrest and here is the third mechanism that is the apoptosis where there is ditch death and elimination of the damaged cells in case the cells cannot undergo dna repair there is another way that is undergoing apoptosis so this is the normal function of the p53 as i said before and in case if there is any mutations in p53 that could lead to malignancy so we'll see this picture here so this is also a normal cell and under some kind of stress from ionizing radiations or mu mutagens or something so there is some definite stress on this cell so there is dna damage over here and in this particular cell the p53 is damaged so p53 is lost or damaged due to some kind of mutation so when there is loss or damage of p53 the p53 cannot activate the three mechanisms that would prevent the cell undergoing malignancy so the p53 is not activated the cells get mutated so this is a mutated cell where there is intense growth where there is huge nucleuses which is which are one of the characteristic features of the tumor cell so here there is production of the tumor cells because of the fact that the p53 is either lost by mutations so that is what is preventing the mechanisms to take place and that would eventually lead to production of a cell with malignancy so in this phase whenever there is a homozygous loss of tp53 gene the dna damage occurs and there is there is no repair mechanism so it is unrepaired and the mutations occurs the cells undergo on a one way street leading to malignant transformation where we can see the intense growth of the cell over here and less commonly some patients inherit a mutant tp53 allele which results in a syndrome called leifraumeni syndrome which is called as leifraumeni syndrome where the people with leifraumeni syndrome has a greater chance of developing cancers considering the normal population because of a mutant tp53 allele so 
and there is also sometimes involvement of the DNA viruses like oncogenic papillomaviruses, hepatitis B viruses and Epstein-Barr viruses which can bind to the p53 gene and nullify its function so whenever there is uh, damage or loss of p53 the cells could easily acquire malignancy and as I said before more than 70% of cancers notify a defect in p53 so the three mechanisms of p53 is so important to understand the carcinogenesis